Hi, it's Linda Jane Green here, and it's very early in the morning. I haven't slept yet. My schedule has changed now with me doing nursing at nighttime, and uh, I'm home, but uh, as I was preparing for sleep, you know, and I was praying, uh, I was getting more and more of this conviction from God that he wanted me to uh, do a video and um, transition my Facebook fan page from talking about the attraction marketing and the, the health products uh, over to him. Uh, because I do have a public platform and I've learned how to do the, the Zoom meetings and the, the webcams and all of that. So uh, the reason being is because of the cancel culture that is going on right now with the government and the new policies and the um, executive orders and things. So in February, God had asked me to go to the Capitol building downtown Boise and to stand out in front of the Capitol building and do a video and to uh, state my, my stance of where I stand with the government issues. Um, and that was in February and I posted that video and I, I pinned it to the top of the fan page. Since then I have been putting different uh, captions out and blogs and things on, on the Facebook fan page that are for God and uh, giving him a voice. I do have the three books and they're on my um, uniqueentrepreneur.org website. And I have done a video mentioning that they're available for sale. And those are my testimony and my, uh, the things God asked me to write, uh, the three, three books. I have the uh, nailed down is the first one that I wrote. And uh, it was because God had asked me to write it. And I thought I was writing it for my children as my legacy and my testimony for them and to, to train them and to teach them about spiritual warfare and the adversary and Christianity. But um, the, the second book was Vice Grip, which I wrote, and then also Emissions. I did a little video talking about those and they're available on the website. But what I had done was I was learning how to do the attraction marketing and the, the videos and all of this um, platform and speaking in front of a camera for the attraction marketing, not for the books or for the health products so much. Um, and in the, in the, over the last, well, since January and all of the executive orders and all of the, the things that are turning in the government, I have been more and more uh, disturbed by what's going on. And then there's also this, um, canceling of Christianity, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. Now they're wanting to erase women with the HR5 bill and allow anybody that expresses that they relate as a woman, that they can go in bathrooms and go in showers and be in sports and, and be on the teams as if they are a woman, just because they say that they uh, reference themselves as a woman. And um, I'm, I'm bothered by that. There's a lot of Christians that are bothered by that. I have been praying. I've been watching a lot of the news, trying to you know, gauge what's going on and is this reality and are we turning into a communist country and, and what's happening? And then I have posted things on my personal profile, which uh, Facebook has said they didn't like it and it, it went against their policies and their standards. And um, there's just not the freedom of speech. Then of course we have all of these issues going on with the border and southern Texas where the 
government had said to stop the wall, stop making the wall, leave the borders open, and then they got rid of the uh, the different policies that were in place that kept us with uh, more of a closed border and legal immigration. And uh, it's it's just seeming to get worse and worse. And as as I'm praying and asking God, what are we doing and what's happening and uh, what do you want me to do? You know, like, is there something, you know, that I'm supposed to be doing? And the answer that I'm getting is he wants me to be more public with my voice and with my stance. So I wrote down some scripture verses and uh, I'm, I've got all of the video and everything set up so that I could do this and I don't really have a script. Um, I'm, I'm sitting here with my Bible and I do have, I have some of the, uh, that's me, and I do have some of the, the verses that are, you know, tabbed out that I wanted to go through that are all in the New Testament. Um, I have been a Christian since I was about six years old. I operate Holy Spirit. I have an understanding of spiritual warfare. I wrote about it in the books. Uh, I've been stalked for 19 years because um, I am against human trafficking and I have not been a part of human trafficking. I have not been a slave within that um, organization. And um, God has help, help, helped me to sidestep these people, even though they monitor where I'm at, what I'm doing, and they see me all the time. And, um, you know, I just, I've withstood it. Um, and I wrote about that in my script. But, uh, you know, this, this, is a very necessary situation that the Christians, the people who understand spiritual warfare and who have Holy Spirit and know how to operate it need to stand up and, and do something about it. And so this is me standing up. Um, I, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior back when I was around six. And I don't really think I understood fully what I was doing. I knew that I wanted God, the creator of the heavens and the earth to be my dad. I wanted him to be my father and I wanted him to expose himself to me and teach me about him. I was going to church with my parents. My dad was going to be a Baptist minister, but he didn't, uh, he didn't make it through the classes to do that. And my mother back then, uh, well, she only had a sixth grade education and so she didn't qualify as being a Baptist minister's wife because she didn't have uh, the education. So uh, I did start out with church. We went to church Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday evening. I went to Awana uh, where you learn Bible verses as a child and, and do different games and things to teach you the, the Bible with uh, puzzles and little ribbons if you can memorize the scripture verse correctly and um so uh when i was around 19 though there were so many different religions and there were so many different belief systems and i really wanted to just know outside of religion you know like who who is god and what is reality and how does he relate to people? And is he for real or is this all just um, a religious hoax? And I, I did go in and out of different churches with my friends at school um, because I wanted to find out what did other people believe and what was, what was the truth? I wanted the truth. At one point I was uh, standing out on Hennepin Avenue, downtown Minneapolis, because that's where I grew up. And I was handing out tracts that were titled Three Ways to Being Saved. Um, and I, I met some people that away that had uh, truth from the word of God. And, and uh, I just, it has been a journey, I guess, is what I'm trying to say is my, my growth spiritually and my understanding of God in being in and out of ministries and in and out of churches and, and going on this this lifelong journey 
uh, I, I do have uh, Holy Spirit. I speak in tongues. There's nine manifestations of Holy Spirit and I operate them. Um, I wrote about those and nailed down and I have offered that uh, book publicly for people to read. And I can read it to you if, if that's what God wants me to do. Um, but I was, I was getting ready to go to sleep and I just kept having this strong conviction that God was wanting me to get up and do this video. And so um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read some Bible verses. I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can, I can see the fine print here. Um, I wanna go into 1 Corinthians 2.14. I'm going to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and just start reading all 2 to 14. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, well, I got to pray first. Uh, thank you, Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, for your word and for you being holy, the creator of the heavens and the earth and that you love us, you wanted a family, and you've called us to be in relationship with you. And that was the whole purpose for creating the heavens and the earth was to house man so that uh, we could have a relationship with you. And I just thank you, Father, for uh, whatever it is that you're wanting me to say that it gets said and that it can be heard by the people that you've intended for them to hear it and that it can be received. And I just thank you for eyes being opened, ears being opened, and for your word being proclaimed in a way that it can be received by people who are needing to hear it. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Okay, let's start in with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Verse six, Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath, hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. I wanted to read this because it's discussing the difference between somebody who is born again of the Spirit of God and who can know all things because of the Spirit being in, in them and God revealing uh, to the spirit in in them deep things 
uh, if you're a natural man, if you're not born again of Holy Spirit, then these spiritual things are not going to make any sense to you. They're going to come across as being foolish. It says in verse 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So if, you're, if you are just a, a person with body and soul and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have not received the Holy Spirit, the, the things that I want to talk to you about and the, the things that God is going to be discussing through me with you, they're not going to make sense. They're going to come across as being foolish because they're spiritually discerned. So in order for a natural man to receive the spirit of God so that God can communicate back and forth between, between your brain and his, his uh, Holy Spirit is by you receiving the Holy Spirit and then the Holy Spirit inside of you uh, communicates with God and teaches you all things. So... If you want to become born again, then what it says is in Romans, the book of Romans in chapter 10, and I'm flipping my Bible to that spot for you. So Acts, Romans, Corinthians, Romans, and in chapter 10, and in verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, this is how you get born again and receive Holy Spirit from God. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him, Jesus Christ, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In order to become born again of, uh, with, of God, to become a born again Christian and have Jesus Christ uh, come and live inside of you via the Holy Spirit and have it be God in Christ in you, you've got to believe that, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and, that, and you make him your Lord. You believe that uh, God raised him from the dead. You confess that. No. So you can say a prayer real quick if you want. And accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And just, uh, Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, I believe that you are the God, the creator of the heavens and earth. I believe that you redeemed man through Jesus Christ, your son. And by him being the sacrifice for our sins and died on the cross, that he delivered us from all unrighteousness and all sin. And he paid the price uh, for our sin. And he redeemed us back to you. And I make Jesus Christ my Lord. And I accept him as my savior. And I want your Holy Spirit, and I want to be born again of your, your spirit and be your child. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. So if you accept, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, if you believe that God brought him into the earth and redeemed mankind via him, uh, via Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. It's just that simple. When you go back into the, what we were reading earlier, 1 Corinthians in chapter 2, it talks about that um, Jesus Christ paid the price for our sins. And it talks about that um, the princes of this world didn't know that. It says that, which in verse 8, chapter 2, verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew. We're talking about devil spirits. 
the the host of the the devil the angels that went with lucifer uh, when lucifer was cast out of heaven uh, for trying to usurp the throne of god god cast him out of heaven and one third of the angels went with him onto the earth and that's the demonic spirits the devil spirits and what it says in verse 8 of chapter 2 of corinthians first corinthians chapter 2 verse 8 which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it they would not have crucified the lord of glory the if if the devil knew that when jesus christ was crucified on the cross that once once he died and then rose again three days later if the devil had known that every single person on earth could become born again of the holy spirit and be uh here in christ's stead performing miracles and, and having holy spirit uh and everywhere we are god is there because we're like a lightning rod you know uh bringing god into the earth the the earth was given to the devil based on what adam and eve did in the garden of eden um so it was high treason and adam and eve were meant to have the garden and the oversight of the garden and to name the animals and caretake all of the soil and the plants and vegetation and things and then the devil as a serpent approached them and tricked them into eating the forbidden fruit that was in the garden god said you can have the fruit of all of the trees in the garden but of this one particular tree don't eat the fruit of it well uh the devil came and convinced them and tricked them into eating the fruit and disobeying god and by doing that they aligned themselves with the devil and the devil became the the ruler of the earth at that point and i did write a blog about that and i put scripture verses on there and uh, talked about how when jesus christ was being tempted of the devil that he took him up in into a high mountain and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said if thou will bow down and worship me uh i will i will give you all of the the power and the oversight of all these kingdoms and this the devil could do that and he could offer those things to jesus uh, because of him having those rights the power over it and that was because adam and eve relinquished their right over the earth uh, jesus christ was brought onto the earth in order to redeem mankind ever since adam and eve ate of the fruit of the tree of the garden and um, gave the adversary the devil satan lucifer gave him the rights over the earth so we're in the devil's kingdom but by having the holy spirit and being born again of god and having the the manifestations or the operations of the holy spirit uh, we are citizens of heaven living here on the earth and because we're here god has a right to intervene into what the devil is doing so it says in first corinthians uh chapter 2 verse 8 that if the devil had known that there that jesus christ was going to rise again three days later and be the savior of mankind and uh be able to have holy spirit inside every born again believer and have it be god in christ in you he never would have crucified the lord of glory he would have just allowed Jesus Christ to uh, fade out and, and die a natural death because Jesus Christ is a man. He was a man and uh, Mary, who was his mother, was asked by God if she would allow God to implant sperm in her and become impregnated. And she said, yes, she, she would allow that. So Mary, is the mother of Jesus. And uh, when when the, the conception happened inside of Mary Mary's womb, it was God implanting a sperm to fertilize the egg in Mary. Um, 
So it was, she was a virgin at the time of the conception. And Jesus Christ developed in her womb for the nine months and was birthed through her and lived as a man on the earth because he is a man. He had a connection with God, his father, uh, with spirit upon him. And, but he didn't have spirit in him. He wasn't born again of the Holy Spirit. When he was baptized, the spirit rested on him like as a dove. I can reference all of these spirit, these uh, verses. Uh, but I'd like to move forward um, uh, in First John chapter 2. And in verse 1 and 2, where I was wanting to go, First John chapter 2, 1 and 2. My little children, meaning you and I, you know, God, God has us as his children when we become born again of his Holy Spirit. Uh, my little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, you have an advocate with the Father, which is Jesus Christ, the righteous. So we have Father, God, and then we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, who's righteous. The right Jesus Christ is righteous. He's our advocate. Verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for our, ours only, but for, and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So Jesus Christ paid the price of sin and he is the one that is our savior and it allows us to have that salvation through him. And he's also our advocate between God and mankind. He is our advocate with God. And then I wanted to go into uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. And in verse Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, it says, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful peaceable life in all godliness and honesty for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior so we're supposed to um, pray and give thanks for for all men for kings also and for all that are in authority we're supposed to be thankful for them and pray for them that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For, for there is one God, there, there's one true God, the God and creator of the, of the heavens and the earth. There's one mediator between God and men the man Christ Jesus it says that it is the man Christ Jesus who is our mediator between God and and us because he's the one that died on the cross and rose again on the third day and he is the one that is seated at the right hand of the father making intercession for us and being our advocate and being our mediator between us uh, that between us and God and that is why when you pray, you pray in the name of Christ Jesus. You can make requests of God and you can, you can pray to God. But when you're doing that, the, the way that it, that it has authority is through Jesus Christ because he paid the price for our sins. He is righteous. 
he redeemed mankind and he's seated at the right hand of the father so when you pray and you're talking to god the authority of god intervening and coming onto the earth and being able to make adjustments and answer your prayers is through the authority of jesus christ and what he did for us so when you pray pray in the name of christ jesus or jesus christ you know people have talked uh that they've taken christ out of christmas you know and, and it it's been you know voiced quite quite a lot uh that when christmas comes around a lot of people say xmas and they they take christ out of christmas but they're also taking christ out of prayer you know uh i always pray in the name of jesus christ because that is the authority there are so many people named Jesus. Uh, it's by grace that their prayers are being answered because there are, there are so many people in the world being that are named Jesus. Uh, when, when Jesus was imprisoned and they were trying to figure out, should we release him or should we release another guy? His name was Bar Jesus. And he was actually a murderer and people even though they couldn't find any sin or any kind of uh, lawlessness in Jesus, uh, they still wanted him crucified. That was that was the goal. That was the, advers the adversary moving toward that. And so Jesus was crucified and he, and he became our Lord and savior because he was perfect. He served and worshiped God and lived a perfect life. He was the perfect sacrificial lamb uh, for our sins. And so the Old Testament with all of the bloodshed, with all of the, you know, people offering up lambs and, and without spot and without blemish and, and uh, being redeemed of their sins through the bloodshed of the lambs. Well, Jesus Christ was our perfect lamb no spot no blemish and he, his blood was shed at, to redeem us once and for all permanently um and so that's that was how god redeemed man we don't have to do bloodshed on altars and and do sacrifices anymore and and uh go through all of that like they did in the old testament to redeem us from sin because Jesus Christ did it once and for all, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. He makes intercession for us. He's the mediator between God and man. And when you pray and you ask God for something, in order for him to intervene in the devil's kingdom to answer your prayer and to make the adjustments and, and uh, step into the devil's kingdom and have that authority to be here is through the, the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord and Savior he's the authority it's you know we have the american embassy over in in other countries so if an american goes over to another country they have to abide by the laws and the rules of that land and if for some reason something it comes up that is unlawful or um problematic for that for that american over in a foreign country they have the American embassy and they have the right to go to the American embassy in order to have an advocate to help them uh, with <clears throat> laws and rules and jurisdictions and things being an American citizen in a foreign country. Well, we're citizens of heaven as Christians. And so uh, we're here in the devil's kingdom, but we're actually citizens of heaven. So, uh, we have to utilize the, the authority of Jesus Christ as as being uh, allowing God to step into this country, into the world to redeem us from whatever jurisdiction or law that the adversary is imposing upon us or whatever we've done to overstep boundaries in the devil's kingdom. But that it, that is, uh, like a court system legality way of doing things you know we jesus christ and god the holy spirit they follow rules based upon jurisdiction and based upon uh you know 
land and boundaries and things. So, but the, of course, the adversary, the devil, he, he doesn't follow rules. He's he's lawless and he's he's completely evil, and he's going to do what he wants to do, and he's going to overstep boundaries. Uh, but we're we're still um, bound by doing things correctly through God and through the mediator, Jesus Christ. So uh, those were the verses I wanted to share with you. Um, I, I do want to go into Ephesians chapter 6. Acts, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians chapter 6. And I want to show you in verse... In verse 12, well, I'll start in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. God, God didn't leave us here on earth without, without physical or spiritual abilities. The, the, uh, we have armor from God in order to withstand the wiles of the devil. Uh, because we wrestle not, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's, that's what we're up against. You know, we're human. And yet we're in a spiritual warfare. We're wrestling against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We require God and Jesus Christ our mediator to God. We require the Holy Spirit in order to live our lives and function in this world. Because the devil hates us, absolutely hates us, because the whole purpose for our being is in order for God to have a family and for us to have a relationship with him. And God created the heavens and the earth in order to house us. And then he created Adam and made form and created Adam and Eve and put them in the Garden of Eden. And he was having a relationship and having conversations with them. And then the adversary screwed that up. And he's polluted the world. He's polluted mankind. He's uh, set out lying. Um, and in, in John chapter 10, verse 10 it calls him the thief um the gospel of john I'll just go there matthew mark luke and john so in john chapter 10 i'm using the king james version of the bible in john 10 chapter chapter 10 verse 10 says the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy that he's that's his whole goal that's his whole ambition i am come meaning jesus christ i am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly he's using the word might you might have life you might have it more abundantly because it's dependent upon you and what you do and what you believe and what and what what you do with your life and how you function and if you accept jesus christ as your lord and savior and if you learn how to operate the manifestations of holy spirit and if you learn the, the word of god and you understand what your placement is then you might have life and you might have it more abundantly but without it you're definitely not going to have it because the whole purpose of the devil is to steal, kill, and destroy you and your property, your possessions, your family, your goals, ambitions, dreams, hopes, your livelihood, uh, your health, 
whatever you have, he wants it. He's going to steal, kill, and destroy. Right now, he's stealing America, and he's stealing the political platform of making rules and regulations and deciding how we can and cannot live and what we can and cannot say and canceling us and canceling uh, women and femininity and uh, privacy and whether or not women can be in sports and compete against women or not, uh, whether or not we have the right to religion and freedom of speech and freedom of religion. And now he wants to take away our guns so that when he comes um, more and more intrusive into our lives, you know, the open borders is very intrusive, you know, and they're coming in with guns. The cartel have guns, they have drugs, they have their ambition and their um, determination for drug trafficking and human trafficking and just evil. So he's stealing the land, he's stealing the government, he's stealing uh, our rights from the constitution. He wants to now take away our guns so that we don't have any way of defending ourselves with uh, guns and things to, you know, to protect ourselves. But this is a spiritual warfare. And yes, there's flesh and blood coming after us and it's flesh and blood that's crossing the borders and, and it's flesh and blood human beings that have the devil housed in them, principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world, devil spirits, legions of devil spirits living inside these people and, and speaking through them and having authority through them and dictating what is and isn't going to happen in our lives. Those are all, you know, people being possessed and promoting the devil's agenda and so you and I being, being Christians and being spiritual beings with the, the power of God in Christ in us, we have to stand up and we have to fight in this spiritual warfare. So the only way you're going to do that is first off by being born again and second off by learning what your physical or spiritual capabilities are and start operating them and learning how to do them. Um, so I wrote nailed down because I, I listed off as many of the devil spirits that I am aware of that exist and the, the scripture verses that uh, direct you to those so that you can have some learning and training on that. And uh, I believe that God is wanting me to start talking and using this platform for his purposes of, of withstanding the adversary, the devil, uh, Lucifer and his host. And so I want to be obedient to him and do that. Uh, it's uncomfortable. I'm having to stretch out of my comfort zone to do that. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I didn't think of myself as, you know, a Bible teacher, but I am capable of, of teaching the Bible. I didn't think of myself as being an evangelist, but I can offer uh, Christianity and uh, teach you how to say the prayer to become born again, I can do that. So I can step into the, uh, the role of an evangelist. Um, if people want to uh, follow the videos that I'll be doing, you know, I, could, I can pastor you if you have questions or if you have needs, I can pray with you. The, the things that, that um, the different roles that God gives Christians, you know, I can do those things. I can step into them and I can rise up into those capacities. And you can step into them and rise into those capacities as well. If God is calling you and asking you to have a platform for him and to step into a role, whether it be a government role or, you know, a, a leadership role of, you know, evangelist, pastor, preacher, teacher, you know, whatever it is that God's asking you to do, you, you can do it. Uh, it might be uncomfortable at first. You might have to learn some skill sets. You might have to reroute your original plan. Like my plan was 
to sell the attraction marketing uh, skill sets through the classes um, and then also sell health products. But being a voice for God and having a platform on the internet for God is much more important than any of these other things that can be done. So I have, I have fulfilled what he asked me to do. He wanted me to remind you that I have this book nailed down and it's on Amazon and uh, you're welcome to purchase that. And it, it's, it tells you everything that you need to know. And I could sit and read the book to you, but um, it's probably beneficial to you to have that as, as a manual, but uh, the things that I'm teaching, would, they are listed in there. And they're also in emissions and in vice grip. So, uh, when I'm doing these videos, I will be reiterating the things that I've already written. Uh, so he wanted me to offer that book to you and to remind you that the information is in there. He also wanted me to remind you to, to become born again so that you're not a natural man of just body and soul, but that you have the spirit of God so that he can communicate with you and relate with you through the, the authority of Jesus Christ, our living Lord and Savior so that he can uh, speak to your spirit in you and give you direction and guidance and help you to withstand the wiles of the devil and, and start taking on this, uh, this spiritual warfare in the capacity that, that he will rise up in you to do. Um, because you, you're in a spiritual warfare and the only way you're going to defeat it and overcome it is by understanding how to go about uh, defeating uh, the devil spirits that are coming at you and who they are and, and their tactics and how they go about approaching you with their lies and their deception. And uh, so that's, that's uh, you know, you wanna get born again and have Holy Spirit so that you can have that uh, walkie talkie conversation with God that his spirit can talk to your spirit and then your spirit can relay the information to your mind this, that's how it works god is spirit and those that worship him worship him in spirit and in truth uh, god is a spirit so in order to connect with him through jesus christ and god being a spirit you have to have holy spirit you have to have the connection um, otherwise you're dependent upon other people to tell you what god is wanting you to know and giving you the information second hand third hand fourth hand but by getting holy spirit you get you can get the information directly and have uh the conversation with god directly like what adam did before he lost holy spirit in the garden of eden and um the, so god wants you to know that he's available for a relationship with you that this is a spiritual warfare that we're in. It looks like it's politicians. It looks like it's cartel. All of these people are possessed of the devil and the host of the dark demonic angels that are working in them to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, we're not wrestling against uh, flesh and blood. We are wrestling against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this earth. And uh, Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and us. And he wants me to also speak in tongues for you so that you can see that I do have Holy Spirit and uh, that I am um, authentic. So I'm going to speak in tongues for you. The adversary, the devil, wants you to think that whenever somebody speaks in tongues that they're going to roll around on the floor and lose control and they're going to you know be foaming at the mouth or handling snakes and all that's a lie and it's a deception and the purpose of that is to get you to become fearful of receiving holy spirit and having uh, the, the power base of the holy spirit speaking in tongues is what energizes all of the other manifestations uh, there's speaking in tongues speak, speaking in tongues with interpretation uh, prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, faith, miracles, and gifts of healing. Now, all of those things you're capable of doing if you have Holy Spirit, but the speaking in tongues is what gives you 
the uh, uh, the power drive. It's the battery. If you have, if you think of an analogy of a car, if your car doesn't have a battery, you're not going to operate the horn, the radio, the uh, the lights. You're not going to be able to start the vehicle. The ignition won't turn over. The speaking in tongues in this analogy would be the battery that operates all of the other manifestations. Without it, you don't have the power. You don't have the um, the juice, the, the strength to operate the other manifestations. So you do want to have uh, the, the Holy Spirit and you do want to operate uh, speaking in tongues. And then as you do that, you can it'll start energizing the other manifestations. You know, they were talking about uh, Jesus Christ was in the throng of people and this woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years said in her heart, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And she believed that. And she made it through the throng of people and got to the point where she touched the hem of his garment and she was healed. She was made whole from that very moment. And he felt the virtue, the power leave him. And he looked around and said, who, who has touched me? I felt the power leave me. Now, Jesus Christ had Holy Spirit upon him when he was baptized and fulfilled uh, that, um, that rule or that law. He fulfilled that by being baptized of water. Um, the Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove. And he had that connection with God uh, through the Holy Spirit descending upon him as a dove. Uh, and when you become, you know, because he died and rose again on the cross, and we are saved. And we, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have Holy Spirit inside us. The, it talks in the Bible about, you know, that Jesus Christ, he died and rose again and he went to the Father and, and he said that, the things that I have done, you will do also, and greater things than what I have done, you will do because I go into my Father. Well, some people are questioning what are the greater things that Jesus Christ said we would do because he he healed the sick, he healed people who were blind, he um, had lame to walk, he rose people from the dead. There were so many things that Jesus Christ did as miracles, and so when it says that. Uh, that because he goes unto the father you know and we're we're here on earth that we would do the same things that he did and greater things you know casting out devil spirits and all that he said we would do greater things than that well people wonder what is the greater things that we're going to be capable of doing the greater things is getting people born again of holy spirit and leading them into the nine manifestations of holy spirit and leading them into speaking in tongues those things weren't available when Jesus Christ was here walking the earth and uh, before he went to sit at the right hand of the Father and make intercession for us and be our mediator. Uh, when he walked the earth, those things weren't available because Holy Spirit was not yet available to be in, implanted inside human beings because Jesus Christ is the one that caused those things to become available. People weren't speaking in tongues when Jesus Christ was here walking the earth. Those things became available after Jesus Christ died and resurrected and sat at the right hand of the Father. So when Jesus Christ is listing off all of the things that he did as works here on the earth, and then he said, I'm going to the Father, you're going to do the same things that I've done in greater works than these will you do. He was referring to being able to... Uh, lead people into becoming born again and lead, leading people into speaking in tongues and receiving Holy Spirit. Those things weren't available when he was here. So I'm going to, I'm going to operate Holy Spirit. I have control of it. I, I have, it's my Holy Spirit that God gave me. I speak in tongues. I operate nine manifestations. I'm not going to rise on the floor. I'm not going to handle snakes. I'm going to stop and start according to my own a desire, desire in choosing and um it's going to be uh decent and in order like the word of god says we're to do things 
So, M. Shande Liberty and Bohundo de Menye, he ate as a Shande as a Sandele, he ate your Hundonda, Aminande, Kambie, Eleka Beriondo, Osha Shande as a Sande, he ate your Hundonda, Maniata, Punto, Osha Shande as a Sande, Eleka Beriondo, Kandonde, Amenye, to Oslon, Amehai, Atata, Oya, Hangi, E, Ohondoi, Umbia, Yakishi. I don't only yet on a ha, so I don't know what I said. That was me speaking in a, a language either of angels or of men. If I was in a meeting with uh, believers, Christian believers, and God gave me the interpretation of the tongue for the meeting for the people, then I would be able to tell you what it was that I said. Um, but I'm not in a meeting and it, the, the speaking in tongues doesn't actually edify anybody in a meeting unless there is an interpretation of that tongue. So I, there's so much that I can tell you. There's so much that I've learned. I've been trained. Um, I, I do have a lot of information about the Bible. This is the things that God wanted me to share with you right now. I have no idea how long the video is, but I'm just being obedient. Um, God loves you. He wants you to know that he loves you. And he is with you. And he is so sorry for all of the abuse that you've had to go through at the hand of the enemy. He is so, so sorry for the devil having the control over this earth. He's done everything that he can through Jesus Christ and through uh, Jesus Christ making the sacrifice, living a perfect life first off, fulfilling all of the laws and the prophets and everything that was spoken of him in the Bible and everything that was spoken of him that wasn't written down. He fulfilled everything. Uh, the spoken word and the written word and he became the sacrifice for our sins and he redeemed mankind from the hand of the adversary um, so now we have holy spirit and we can start to withstand the enemy the evil one through through that and god wants you to learn how to do those things and he wants you to learn how to fight this bully um, that's in the playground and uh, the various ways that he's coming against you and attacking you and stealing and killing and destroying your life. He never intended for these things to happen. When the devil went into, like he was Lucifer, he was the angel of light. And then you have Michael, who is the warrior and, and uh, Gabriel, who is the messenger, the arch archangels of God. Lucifer wanted to usurp the throne of God and become like the most high God and and the God the creator of the heavens and the earth said no and he kicked him out of heaven and he was cast down to earth and now being here on earth he is uh, wreaking havoc and jealous and wanting wanting the land that God has and wanting the people that God has and wanting to just destroy humankind even in the womb before they even have a chance to take the first first breath uh so we're in a spiritual warfare god has redeemed us you need to learn how to uh fight in the in the spirit with spiritual warfare god loves you he hopes that you will receive holy spirit receive jesus christ as your lord and savior and uh save yourself in in a spiritual warfare uh in your own territory in your own mind in your own life and uh, i just pray in the name of christ jesus that you receive this that you that you accept jesus christ as your lord and savior and that you do start to withstand the evil one 
in, in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Thanks for spending time with me and I will listen and keep giving you whatever it is, the information that God wants me to share with you. Have a, have a good day and thanks. Bye-bye.